a thousand miles that way, a third of the way across the United States, on this scale, in order to do a timeline to show building up the carbon and the fossil fuels, building up, building up, building up, building up over 300,000 years, and then poof, all of it, all of it, taken out of the ground and put back up into the air in the form of carbon dioxide. So that's 300 million years worth of carbon dioxide in the air that's been pulled out of the air, stored, and then spit back out in 200 years. That's why carbon dioxide is, is the significant greenhouse gas that we talk about. Because the time scale here, scale here is just ridiculous. Although this is a very slick trick. This is really cool. This energy right here, guess where it came from? The sun, 300 million years ago. Because this process right here, when plants take carbon dioxide and they split it, they use the energy of the sun to do the splitting. Photosynthesis, right? That energy is stored in the carbon for hundreds of millions of years. So when you dig it up and we burn it, that flame is literally the energy from the sun from hundreds of millions of years ago. What really does get us, though, is the fact that this greenhouse gas here has been sequestered in the ground for 300 million years. And now suddenly, we just vomit it right back into the atmosphere in uh, the blink of a geological eye. Okay, I cleaned up my picture a little bit so we can add some more stuff. Let's take a closer look at uh, what's going on. We got one idea of the time scale, 300 million years versus 200 years. Let's look at rates of the actual carbon going in and out. And when we talk about rates, we're going to talk about gigatons of carbon. So G is gigatons, is metric tons. Um, this is billions of tons. So one gigaton is one billion tons. And when I say carbon, what I mean is the carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. So when I say one ton of one gigaton of carbon, I mean one gigaton of this, but the actual mass of the whole carbon dioxide that's emitted is much larger. But usually in climate change, we talk about tons of carbon. So let's take a look at uh, the numbers here. The numbers I got are from NASA. They won't add up um, because of the rounding. You may find some numbers elsewhere, but they're all, they're, they'll, you'll, they'll be in the ballpark. So I got mine from the NASA website. The main ones to look at here, there's a ton going on, but the main ones to look at are the ocean. And this is going to be gigatons of carbon per year. So it's a rate of emission and uptake. The oceans take in about 92 gigatons of carbon every year and they give out about 90 gigatons of carbon a year. So you can see on a uh, net basis, they actually take in two gigatons of carbon a year. Um, the terrestrial biosphere, that is plants on land, generally take in about, my numbers were taking in about 121 and giving off about 120. So you can see they're a net sink as well. They actually take up a net one gigaton of carbon per year. Sedimentation down here, this process, sequesters only about 0.2 gigatons of carbon per year, so it's pretty slow. That's why it took so long to build up these big reserves. Um, and then anthropogenic sources like fossil fuels and deforestation. Over here, the fossil fuels, we get about 6 gigatons a year out of carbon from our fossil fuel emissions on our tailpipes and our um, cement factories and our power plants. And also, by deforestation and agricultural practices, we emit about one gigaton per year. So total human cause source of carbon emissions into the air per year is about seven gigatons a year. Another interesting thing, that number has changed since I first started looking at climate change about 15 years ago. Then it was six, now it's seven. So, um, oh, and for those of you fans of volcanoes, volcanoes put out about 0.15. An individual, an individual eruption will put out a bit more than that. But on average, over the years, about uh, 0.15 gigatons per carbon per year. It's essentially negligible. So, and the reason I mentioned volcanoes is because I want to talk about a, a couple things. If you happen to see the movie, The Great Global Warming Swindle, um, you got swindled. Uh, it has not stood up to criticism. Go do the Googling yourself and remember to evaluate your sources, but look at the critiques of the movie and you'll see, and I'll show you some real basic things. For instance, in the great global warming swindle, they said that volcanoes emit more carbon, volcano eruptions emit more carbon than humans. Well, clearly that's not true. The guys at NASA are not that dumb. Um, and if you go any other credible source, we'll show you that the numbers simply are not there. Um, the other thing is the filmmaker made the claim that the oceans give off more carbon every year than humans, which if you look at this is a true statement. The oceans give off 90 gigatons of carbon a year. Humans give off about seven. We're a dwarf compared to the oceans. What he forgot to mention 
is that the oceans also take up 92 gigatons. So they're actually a sink. The net effect is they take in two gigatons a year, whereas the net effect of humans is giving out seven gigatons a year. And um, the similar thing, plants and animals, I think he said they give off 150 gigatons, my numbers say 120, but same thing as with the oceans. It gives you the number of the carbon dioxide going out, the carbon going out, but not of the carbon uptake. So you can see that uh, plants are actually take in, they're a net sink. So the first two statements um, were deceptive in that he gave you these numbers and said, look, humans are nothing compared to the 90 gigatons from the ocean and the 120 from the terrestrial biosphere. Those are simply misleading statements. It's along the lines of saying, hey, look out, there's a rhinoceros charging behind you. Oh, he's 15,000 miles away though. So it's true, but it's irrelevant and deceptive. This though was a simple flat out lie. He just, I don't know how he thought he could get away with that. So there's an idea of some of the uh, numbers. Now let's take a look, closer look at what goes on with this. Where does this go? Because it turns out this seven gigatons a year doesn't all stay in the atmosphere. About two gigatons goes into the ocean and that's where the sink is. So that's where uh, this is where the um, 90 and the 92 come from. Three remain in the atmosphere and another two we don't know where they go. It's actually called the missing sink. There must be something somewhere in this system that's sucking up two gigatons of carbon a year, two billion tons of carbon a year. We don't know where it is yet. And that's worrisome. You'll see why later if you look at the scare tactics video. So this is the main number that we're looking at. We emit seven, but only three stays in the atmosphere for now. So every year, three more, three billion tons more of carbon go into the air as a result, direct result of our activities. Now is that a lot or a little? In order to figure that out, we have to look not at rates, but at total amounts. So uh, maybe I'll take some of these off the board so that uh, it's not quite as confusing. So in trying to get a sense of the scale of why carbon dioxide or carbon emissions are such a big deal, we looked, one way is to look at simply time scale, 300 million years versus 200 years. 300 million years to put it in the ground, 200 years to get it up. Another way was to look at the rates we put out seven gigatons a year, human activity, and the rate of sedimentation was only 0.2 gigatons per year. So you can see there's a big uh, imbalance right there. The other way is to look at total amounts of carbon in these different realms. So we put out a net amount of three gigatons per year. How much is in the atmosphere? Is that a lot or a little? Well, the atmosphere at any time has about 750 gigatons of carbon in it. The ocean, is huge. It's got about 40,000 gigatons of carbon in it at any one time. Oil, numbers I could find were 300, again I got these from NASA, and 3,000. We got way more in the ground. And this is, I, th I think this is not current reserves, I think this is in the entire history of the industrial uh, age. So what we burn so far plus what's projected to still be in the ground. So if you look at this, we put out a net amount of 3 gigatons per year of carbon into an atmosphere that has 750. If you do that, that doesn't look like a huge increase. It's about 0.4%. This three is about 0.4% of 750. What that does though, is that's every year. And if you watch that, and I actually calculated the numbers to see if it worked out. And that actually accounts for the fact that when I first started looking at all this, the composition of the atmosphere was 0.03% carbon. And now it's about 0.04% carbon. That works out. So this is enough to make a difference, to accumulate. And we'll see some graphs on that in just a second. Take a look at this. The ocean is our friend in so many ways. It takes in 92, it gives out 90 gigatons per year. It's got this huge amount right here. It acts as a sponge right now. We don't know how long it will continue to act as a sponge. And as you will see in the video scare tactics, that creates a huge unknown that uh, might hold some nasty surprises for us along with this. Since we don't even know where this is going, we have no way to predict when this sink will essentially be saturated and when it will stop doing this absorbing and we'll end up with all seven gigatons a year going and staying in the atmosphere rather than just the three. Okay, looking at, looking at the significance of carbon dioxide and how a little bit can make a big difference, this is the Vostok ice core data. It's classic ice core data of the carbon dioxide level for the past 160,000 years. We're not talking millions anymore, we're just talking thousands. 